Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's video and the topic is how you can parse higher as a healer and improve your skills overall. I'm going to share with you a few tricks and tips that I learned while playing in a guild where the guild leader was entirely focused on the parses and nothing else. And everything that you're going to see in this video applies to every class and every spec of a healer that you might want to play. However, before we start, let's make a disclaimer here. Your primary goal as a healer is not to get a good parse. Your main job is to keep the raid alive. I'm saying that because sometimes you might do things that are not necessarily good for the raid, but are actually very good for your parse. For example, let's say you're playing Restoration Shaman. Your healing tide totem heals everybody in the raid once you drop it. And if somebody is already at full health, it will just overheal and this is not going to count to your final parse healing. But if you drop Spirit Link at the same time, it will make sure that everybody inside of the Spirit Link is not topped up. So your healing tide totem is going to get its maximum possible value, but you're stacking two big cooldowns on top of each other, which is not necessarily good for the raid because if you distribute them better and spread them in time to cover different mechanics, then your raid is going to benefit more. So having said all of that, I'm actually not a big fan of the healer's parsing. But one thing is for sure, if you try to improve your parses, you're going to learn a lot about your class, about your abilities, and in the process you're going to become a better healer overall. Not to mention that every guild out there is actually looking into parses if you want to apply and become their member. So without further ado, let's dive into the tips and the tricks. The best way to improve is just to analyze your own performance and compare some numbers to other people who are performing better than you. And the best way to do that is just by going to warcraftlogs.com. After all, all the parses and all the logs that you're comparing yourself against are here. And the first thing you want to do is find your own character from the search menu at the top. And then from the presented screen, make sure you've selected healing on the menu on the top left. You can also change the difficulty that you're interested into looking at, Heroic, Mythic, Normal or just the highest. Then you want to click on a boss that you're interested in improving at. This is going to present you with a list of all the parses that you have on this boss. And then you can click on the one that you want to improve and this is going to present you with a list of all the healers. In that specific raid, of course you want to click on yourself and this is going to give you the list of the skills that you casted. And all the numbers connected with them, this is the data that you want to look at and improve. The first advice that I can give you here is if you have somebody who is competent enough in your guild or in your friends list, you can ask them to look into your logs and give you some advice from the numbers that they see. I had guildies do that for me and they actually gave me some very valuable advice. There's also paid services out there, you can pay somebody to actually look into your logs and help you or the so-called coaching. But let's assume you don't have friends who can look into your logs and you don't want to pay quite naturally, then you have to do the job yourself. In the next few segments, I'm going to teach you how to do exactly that. And luckily there's enough data in Warcraft logs that you can look at and learn from. So let's do that. I'm going to leave that app open for later and I'm going to go back to Warcraft logs and select the rates from the top left of the menu. Then I'm going to look for the boss that I'm looking at my own data and click on the rankings. The next thing that I'm going to do is narrow down the search and first select healing from the top left menu instead of damage. Then you want to select your spec and class from the healers menu so you compare to people that perform the same actions as you. In this case, I'm going to go for Restoration Shaman, but of course, if you're playing different class, you can select that. And last but not least, make sure you select from the difficulty menu the difficulty that you're playing at. This is relatively important because on different difficulties, the fights are actually different. There's more or less damage that people are taking. There might be different builds that people are using. And although you can benefit from comparing yourself to the next higher difficulty, it's good to start with people who are playing on the same level as you, especially in the beginning. My own parse that I'm interested in improving was from a heroic, so I'm going to pick heroic from this menu and this is going to present me with a list of all the restoration shamans who killed the Consul of Dreams boss on heroic difficulty below. The first thing that you want to do here is click on the show more button so you can see the most often used talents on this difficulty from the rest of the restoration shamans. 
Compare that with your own build and see if there are some major differences. There's nothing wrong with playing different talents, but what you see here is probably optimal. So you can figure out if you're missing an important skill, add it to your toolkit and then practice using it into the raid. We can now go back to the list of shamans and here we can see the top performance for this boss. The next tip that I can give you is ignore the first few pages. And if you're thinking, wait a second, why? Those are the people who performed the best. Well, yes, you're correct, but those are not ordinary people. That goes back to what I said earlier that I don't like healing parses, and although those are really good players, they also did something really out of the ordinary to get those top parses. They probably got a whole bunch of external buffs, they probably got several augmentation evokers specifically buffing them, even the whole rate was probably helping them to get a higher parse with people standing in fire so they can do more healing. And just to prove that point, let's click on the number one guy here on this list. We are presented with a screen summary of their rate, make sure you select the healing tab over here, and then if we scroll down, we see that there were only two healers in this rate group. So even without looking into buffs and externals, that already tells you that this specific rate group was entirely made just for those two healers to get high parses. And while you can compare yourself to them, and you're still going to learn a lot, you're probably better off finding people who played in a similar environment to your own raid and then compare yourself to them. So let's ignore the very top parses for now and go back to our list. There are two very important metrics that we're going to use in order to find people that we want to compare ourselves against. The first one is the duration column. We're going to try and find fights that lasted as long as our own and we can check that by checking our own log and seeing how much time the timeline has. In this specific case it's about 3 minutes and 30 seconds so I'm gonna go back to the list and only look into fights that have similar time. This will make the comparison a bit easier because if their fight is longer or shorter that means that the amount of cards that they perform is going to be different than yours and even more importantly the number of times that they were able to use their big cooldowns is also going to be different. The other important column is the item level one. We want to find people with similar item level to ours because if there is a big difference there the spells that we're using are going to be hitting for either more or less than theirs. So in order to make our lives easier, we want to make sure that those two metrics are close to ours and we're not comparing oranges to space rockets. So with that in mind, let's scroll down and try to find some more ordinary people which are not going to be, let's say, in the first two pages. Again, you can pick somebody from there, but keep in mind that their whole raid could have been tailored just for them to get a parse. So now that we're here, I'm looking for somebody around the 485 item level and the 330 duration of the fight. This guy actually looks quite nice. Suliana, or we can just call them Silvanas. We're gonna open them into a separate tab and go to their healing as well so we can compare after pressing their name. And before we continue, let's go back and find one more person which is going to be more extreme case. I'm gonna go straight into the URL and instead of page 3, I'm going to type page, let's say, 75. Over here I'm still looking for the same parameters, something around the 484 item level and 330 duration of the fight. So uh, let's say this guy over here looks close enough, uh, Tick Grill or we're just gonna call him Mr. Grill. Again we're gonna open his tab so we're ready to compare. And keep in mind that this low parse could have been your parse and you can compare it to some of the higher ones as well. So now let's start looking into the numbers and we can start with that number here at the bottom which is the total amount of healing that you perform during the fight. This is actually the number that you are being judged by and this is what your parse is going to be but this number does not include the overhealing. Now obviously you don't want to overheal but this is inevitably going to happen during the fight so for the purposes of this example let's just go up here in the tabs and turn on the overhealing then we scroll back down and we see that Mr. Gru's healing went from 139k to 195. You can worry about your overhealing and optimizing that at a later stage, but right now we just want to see what is the raw output for Mr. Gru and then we can compare this to, let's say, Silvana's raw output. 
So let's go to their tap. Of course, we want to turn on the overhealing as well from the taps above. And then when we scroll down, we see 373k. Compared to the 195 of Mr. Grill, this is actually a huge difference. So let's say we're Mr. Grill and Sylvanas is basically doing twice the healing that we do, overhealing aside. So now we need to figure out what do we need to do differently or what they are doing differently that we can do as well to improve our numbers. In order to figure that out, we can now direct our attention to the skills and the column that says how many times we casted each of the spells. Sylvanas over here has 36 casts of the chain heal, which did about 19 million healing. Now let's compare this to Mr. Grills, who only cast the chain heal 20 times and it did 9 million healing. And since the duration of the fight is similar, this is why that metric was important, we can see that Mr. Grill did 43k HPS with his chain heal. And if we compare this to the Sylvanas, it's 93k, which is more than double. So, as you can see, just by looking into those two numbers, we already found a major difference between those two players. And the first thing that Mr. Grill needs to do is just to cast Chain Heal more during the fight, because if your raw HPS is 195k, and Sylvanas is passed without the overhealing is 250k, then there's obviously no way for Mr. Grill to even come close to those numbers. So first and foremost, look into the differences and try to get your raw HPS up as much as you can so you can compare with other people who are doing similar output. And then secondly, the more you're looking into those parses and try to compare them, the more differences you're going to find. However, try to focus only on a couple of things at a time. Because if you make a list with 10 items that you need to improve, you're not going to be able to remember all of them, focus on all of them during the fight, and in that case, you might actually end up performing worse than before. Instead, say, okay, I'm Mr. Grill, I'm not casting Chain Heal enough, so next fight, I'm gonna be casting it more, and this is the only thing that you're going to remember and focus, doing everything else that you did before the same way. Practice that a couple of times, then come back, look at your new logs, and if the chain here is looking okay, then you can start looking for another subtle difference and try to find other ways to improve. Now, obviously that takes a lot of time and effort, but there's no easy way to improve. And the more you do that, and the more people you compare yourself against, the more things you're going to find out. It's actually very important to compare yourself against different people because you don't know if that Sylvanas that had the good parse is not a snowflake in the field that does something completely differently or got extremely lucky. Having said that, there's a few more things that I want to show you. Let's go back to comparing Sylvanas to our favorite Woovy and see what Woovy can improve looking into the locks of Sylvanas. So opening Woovy's locks and turning on the overhealing, we see that the chain heal casts are comparable both in number and amount healed, but the healing tight totem is quite low for Woovy. So you can actually go back and click to a skill to see where it was actually casted during the fight. And if we click on Sylvanas, we see that she casted it two times, once in the beginning, once at the end. The other thing that we notice is that the HPS of Sylvanas is significantly higher than Woovy's, although Woovy casted it only once. So obviously casting the skill more is definitely going to help, but the question here and the puzzle to solve is why is the HPS so much lower? And the answer this time is that Wuvi's raid had about 20 people inside of it, while Sylvanas' raid actually had up close to 26. So, as you can see, in some cases, your parse is actually dependent on the raid that you're playing in. Obviously, that's a bit of a side topic, but if you want to parse better, most of the time having a bigger raid is fine, of course, if you're not playing Mythic. And then also having less healers or as in the case of both Sylvanas and Ruby, having three healers with one of them being really bad also boosts your parse significantly because having bad healers or having less healers overall means that your overhealing is going to be very low. But that's not something that you necessarily have control over so focusing on improving your own gameplay is the only thing that you can do. Now, a few more tips in that direction looking into the logs, you're going to notice that some of the spells do not have cast counts. 
in this case, for example, those are the restorative mists and cloud burst, but you can always click on them to see how the healing from them was actually being generated. Clicking on the cloud burst shows you a timeline which helps you figure out that this was actually pressed 5 times during the fight. And clicking on the restorative mist shows you that there were 3 procs, probably the middle one is the big ascendance and the smaller ones on the sides are procs from the deeply rooted elements. This way you can find out when important skills are being cast throughout the fight, but there's actually a better way to do that. You can scroll up to the top and find the timeline button. After you press that, you can scroll back down and you can see exactly when each of the skills has been cast. So for example, you can see here at the start there's a healing rain starting and if you start scrolling to the right, for example over here, you're going to see that I combined my unleash life and follow it with a chain heal. If you keep scrolling, you're going to see more, the primordial wave is being followed by a healing wave shortly after that and then shortly after you can see that the ancestral guidance has been procced, so this is when the cooldowns are being used and so forth and so forth. Using these two can help you dissect the plays from the best players. You can figure out what spells they're casting, what combinations of spells they're following up with and when they're using their big cooldowns. You can even go one step further, scroll back up and click on the replay button on the top right. This is going to load an interactive map with the fight and display every player with their movement. You can select them from the bottom right and see how everything played out step by step including the spells that they're casting, how are they performing on the meters, how they're moving around the room, etc. All of that is going to help you analyze the plays from players that perform better than you and then you can figure out what are the differences, what can you do differently and then just go and practice it in the raid. After that you can come back in here and compare with them again and again refining and improving yourself in the process. Let me also show you one more tool that could be very useful. It's a website called works.io and it's just an alternative way to look into combined timelines. It works for every spec but let's say you're a Mistweaver monk and you want to look into the Council of Dreams fight. I'll leave this to be mythic but as you can see this shows you the top parsers and when they're casting their spells. You can turn off and turn on some of them and you can see when they're casting their revival, when they're casting their Elon, you can see when they're casting their defensives and so forth and so forth. Every spell that has a cooldown is basically on that list and using that you can figure out when the best players are using their skills. Alright so hopefully that was enough information for you to figure out how you can improve in the raids healing in World of Warcraft. It takes time, it's not an easy process, but as long as you want to improve, you can always find ways to do better. And I hope that you managed to find at least a few good tips in this video. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Until then, bye bye, take care and get out of here.